This decade, one of the most popular and some might argue most overused themes in anime is isekai or being transported to another world. These anime have these anime have varying ways that they might get to that other world, such as being transported to a video game world, tr transported to a random fantasy world, or having the fantasy world be the norm, such as in Don Machi, which isn't actually an isekai anime, but is so damn similar that it might, that it might as well be. But these shows are typically the same regardless. Once in a while, we'll get shows like Recreators that mixes up the formula a bit, in that case bringing the fantasy characters to the real world, but that's few and far between. However, there are good ones. One of my earliest analysis videos was talking about why I love Sword Art Online, despite the criticism it gets, so I'll link it in the description box down below. In this video, however, I'll explain why I think Overlord is the best isekai anime in the wake of season 2 being underway. The first thing we need to understand is what the main appeal of isekai anime is. Escapism. I know some people might bring up now and then here and there, which I made a video on a while back, but that show is by no means an escapist fantasy and isn't that enjoyable to watch honestly. I know some people might say that it's what it technically superior, but I'm basing this analysis on what most viewers, myself included, wants to get out of this genre, not the differences that its earliest predecessor, as far as I was able to find, was able to provide. The first aspect is the overpowered main character. In every one of these shows, the protagonist is an overpowered badass who's able to overcome almost every situation easily and survive the most perilous battles without any rhyme or reason. Kirito from Sword Art Online, Shiroe from Log Horizon, and even Subaru from ReZero, although the latter one is slightly different, all qualify as this. And yes, so does Ayn's Ul Al Gaon from Overlord. I'll defend him by saying that not only is he pretty likable and funny, seriously, as much as I love Sword Art Online, Kirito is the only thing I hated about the show. But it also kind of makes sense why he's so powerful. Ainz has been playing the game for many years and was one, once the leader of the most notorious guild in the entire game. When the series starts, the game is about to be shut down, so there's lots of his history that we have yet to see. Kirito did have a past as a beta tester for Sword Art Online, but there's a plus there's a few training regiments detailed as well, but those only are only if you've read the light novel and the the anime adaptation cut much of that backstory out for some reason. The next point is how much of a chick magnet the protagonist tends to be, for lack of a better term. Kirito from Sword Art Online, Subaru from ReZero, Bell Cranel from Don Machi, all of them have this similar trait. It may be the only aspect of their character that's more well known than the power levels. And guess what, Ainz has this trait as well. However, like the previous, there are a few things here which makes it more enjoyable. First of all, only two girl, there's only two girls who are constantly fawning over him, in this case Albedo and Shaltir, which makes it, which makes the unfunny crap a bit more tolerable. Second, secondly, these two most of the time actually are genuinely entertaining. Albedo is my favorite, she has some of the best lines and facial expressions in the entire show, and her yandere interactions with Shaltir are tr truly a joy to watch. Not to mention, the protagonist isn't completely oblivious to their advances, he just lightly brushes them off or changes the subject and they have no choice but to do, but to do the same. Plus, Ainz does have occasional inner monologues, represented by his actual real-world voice, not his fictional in-game voice, which also manages to get a chuckle out of me. Another part of Overlord I want to praise is the high production value. Technically speaking, that has to do with Madhouse's production and not with the fact that it's an isekai anime, but most isekai anime tend to falter in this area as well, so I feel the need to mention it. For the purpose of this argument, I also want to include anime like Chivalry of a Failed Knight and The Asterisk War, which aren't isekai anime but still tend to follow most of the same tropes, although I actually liked Chivalry of a Failed Knight. 
First of all, the animation is really great in this show, which is almost never the case. I've already explained my, in my Sword Art Online video why I think the animation in that show was good. The movement is plentiful, especially during fight scenes, and are incredibly fluid. Then there's the art. In that regard, I think the character designs are much more interesting and creative than in most of these shows. The characters in Overlord actually look like fantasy characters, rather than normal people thrown into a fantasy story. I also love the thick and bold outlines as well and well-defined shading which Madhouse brings to a lot of their shows. And I think that just about wraps up my, the points I wanted to make. I know they seem rather minor, but I do think that all of these aspects that Overlord excels in helps to make it far better than any other escapist fantasy isekai anime. And in that regard, it's an underrated one that's worthy of more attention. And that does it for me. In the comment section below, let me know what your thoughts on Overlord are as well as my video. Also, if you agree or disagree with anything I said in this video, tell me, as well as what your favorite isekai anime is if it's not Overlord. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. Hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button if you want to know when I up when I, when I make a new video because I upload all the time. Share it around if there's on play share it around on places like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit if there's others you think might like it. And follow me on Twitter if you feel the need. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.